Hey everyone, this is Michael again, and welcome to SmackDown and AW Rampage Review. SmackDown tonight was from San Juan, Puerto Rico, in the Coliseum, while Rampage was taped at the CFG Bank Arena in Baltimore, Maryland. And SmackDown tonight, I gotta say, the crowd there in Puerto Rico carried the show tonight. But overall, aside from the crowd being electric and hot tonight, it was just a very mid-Smackdown, in my opinion. But tonight on Smackdown, we had Gallows and Anderson versus the Viking Raiders, the Street Profits, Montez Ford and Angel Dawkins end up taking on Imperium, Ludwig Kaiser, and Giovanni Vinci. Shinsuke Nakamura took on Karrion Cross, And in the main event, we had a mixed tag team match. Rey Mysterio and Selena Vega took on the SmackDown Women's Champion, Rhea Ripley, and Dominic Mysterio. And I'm like, why are we seeing Selena Vega and Rhea Ripley go at it tonight when we're going to be seeing them go at it tomorrow night at Backlash? But this was you know, the SmackDown's go-home show for Backlash, which is tomorrow. But overall, SmackDown tonight, like I said, just a very mid-show in my opinion. But the crowd there in uh, Puerto Rico just carried the show Throughout the two hours. And yes, it was live tonight. SmackDown was live, you know, in Puerto Rico. But before I get into uh, the review, uh, if you guys haven't checked out my previous video, I did a movie review of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. So uh, definitely go check that out. It is up. Give it a watch if you guys haven't seen it. Really enjoyed the film. And it's definitely uh, worth watching. So check out my review of uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. But be also before I get into the review, uh, there was news that came out today uh, during the Backlash press conference. So Triple H ended up announcing at the uh, Backlash press conference that this Monday on Raw, the World Heavyweight Championship Tournament will be starting. So it's going to take place uh, this Monday on Raw and next Friday on SmackDown. So there will be two triple threat matches with the winners facing off at the end of the night. The same thing is going to happen on SmackDown. So again, uh, the winner from My Night Raw and the winner on SmackDown. And I'm like, why is a SmackDown superstar competing in the World Heavyweight Championship tournament when the title is exclusively to Monday Night Raw? So they contradicted themselves there. Triple H goes out there last week on Monday Night Raw, you know, shows off the new World Heavyweight Championship, says it's going to be exclusively to Monday Night Raw, and then we get this news that came out today. Why having a SmackDown superstar compete in the tournament when the title is exclusive to Monday Night Raw? And this makes the whole draft absolutely fucking pointless. A waste of time. But can you imagine the SmackDown superstar winning the World Heavyweight Championship and then automatically gets drafted to Monday Night Raw? It's going to be Seth Rollins. I think Seth Rollins is going to win uh, the World Heavyweight Championship because the guy deserves it. I don't want to see that SmackDown superstar, whoever it is, win the tournament. The title should go to Seth Rollins. So the winners of the tournament, the winner from Raw and the winner of SmackDown, will square off to become the new World Heavyweight Champion at Night of Champions in Saudi Arabia. So at Night of Champions, we will crown a new world heavyweight champion. 
Rodgers. So there you go. That was the news that broke out today. Obviously, fucking stupid having a SmackDown superstar compete in the tournament when the title is exclusive to Monday Night Raw. WWE just contradicted themselves. Saying, oh, the title is going to be exclusive to Monday Night Raw, yet they're having a SmackDown superstar compete in the tournament. But anyways, let's jump right into the review. SmackDown opened up tonight with the LWO. And what I really liked before when uh, the LWO came out, they had, like I guess, like a drone like flying from outside of the Coliseum in, in Puerto Rico, and it flew right into the arena. I liked uh, how uh, that was done. So pretty cool. So the LWO came out. Rey Mysterio, uh, Santos Escobar, Cruz del Toro, Joaquin Wilds, Zelina Vega. And they ended up walking down to the ring. Got a big pop from the crowd there in Puerto Rico, which the Puerto Rico crowd was hot throughout the night. They really, like I said, they really carried the show. So Rey Mysterio got on the mic. Yep, asking everyone how they are doing. He continued to speak in Spanish. He kept saying they are proud to represent Latinos and how tomorrow Bad Bunny will beat up Damian Priest. So Ray then continued speaking in Spanish. He kept saying, uh, you know, after that, he wants to present the future SmackDown Women's Champion, Zelina Vega. And then out came Dominic Mysterio, Finn Balor, and Rhea Ripley. Damian Priest uh, wasn't out there. So it's just Dominic, Balor, and Rhea Ripley. So they got into the ring. Dom ended up trying to speak in, and in Spanish, and the crowd kept booing him, and the crowd ended up cutting Dom off. So Dom finally spoke. He kept saying that his dad, Ray, has been more of a father to Zelina than to him. So Dom ended up uh, still calling Ray a deadbeat dad. Of course, same old. So Ray ended up telling Dom that he keeps crying. He ended up telling Dom that if Rhea lets him, they can have a WrestleMania rematch. So Rhea got on the mic. She ended up telling Ray that he can fight her. But Zelina Vega stepped up. And Zelina got face-to-face -face with Rhea Ripley. So Dom ended up telling Ray that he can fight them both. So Ray continued to speak in Spanish. He was saying the two of them against himself and Zelina Vega. So the fans were chanting C. Dom then ended up getting a cheap shot on Ray. And then we had uh, Dom, Balor, and Rhea Ripley end up leaving the ring. And pretty much that was basically that. So uh, we had a mixed tag team match uh, later on in the night, which was the main event. So it was uh, Zelina Vega and Rey Mysterio versus Dom and Rhea Ripley. Now I'm like, oh, we're getting this mixed tag team match, but we're seeing uh, Rhea Ripley and Zelina Vega go at it tomorrow at Backlash for the title. So they should have held off of seeing Zelina Vega and uh, Rhea Ripley for tomorrow. So, but overall, it was a, a decent segment to open SmackDown. And now we have the first match of the night. The OC, Luke Gallows, Carl Anderson versus the Viking Raiders. So we had Styles on commentary uh, during the match. We had Mia Yim out at ringside and also uh, Valhalla, Sarah Logan was also out there. 
The match was okay, in my opinion. It wasn't great or perfect by any means. So we had Eric and Ivar end up double teaming on Carl Anderson in the corner as the match end up starting. Eric started to learn some right hands to Carl Anderson, but Carl Anderson ended up fighting back. Anderson delivered a running kick to Eric's knee. Ivar then tagged in, as did uh, Luke Gallows. So Gallows and Ivar end up going at it. Both men were delivering some right hands. Gallows ended up getting Ivar in the corner. And Carl Anderson end up tagging in. So Anderson and Gallows end up double teaming up on Ivar. Carl Anderson end up going for the cover. Ivar end up kicking out. Anderson delivered some right hands on Ivar in the corner. Anderson then climbed the top rope. Valhalla end up distracting Carl Anderson. And Ivar end up pushing Carl Anderson to the outside. Then when SmackDown came back from the commercial... Luke Gallows delivered a back elbow in the corner to Eric, and he followed up with a show tackle onto Eric in the middle of the ring. Gallows then ended up grabbing Eric. Eric then ended up pushing Gallows away, and Ivar tagged in. Gallows ended up delivering a power bomb to Ivar. Gallows ended up going for the cover, and Ivar kicked out. Anderson ended up running towards Ivar. But Ivar ended up hitting Anderson with the back elbow. Eric then tagged in. Gallows ended up going for a boot to Eric. But Eric ended up catching Gallows. Ended up slamming Gallows onto the mat. Ivar then tagged in. He ended up hitting uh, Gallows with a splash off the top rope. Ivar ended up going for the cover. But Carl Anderson broke up the pin. Anderson then delivered a right hand onto Eric. And Ivar then ended up throwing uh, Carl Anderson to the outside. Gallows delivered a spinning back uh, kick, and Anderson ended up tagging in. So Valhalla was distracting uh, the OC, and then uh, Mia Yim ended up taking down uh, Valhalla on the outside. And that's when uh, Gallows and Anderson end up hitting the magic killer to uh, Ivar. So Carl Anderson ended up going for the cover. And there you go. The OC, Gallows and Anderson, ended up winning the match. Overall, the match was okay. Not great or perfect by any means. And then as SmackDown came back from the commercial, we had the Royal Women's Champion, Bianca Belair. Bianca Belair ended up making her way down to the ring. She got on the mic. She ended up saying that she is happy to be drafted to SmackDown and also to be in Puerto Rico. She ended up saying tonight is the eve of when she will defend her Royal Women's Championship against EO Sky. Bianca ended up saying that EO is dangerous and unpredictable. She ended up saying that she has faced the best of the best. Bianca ended up saying that she has flown all around the world defending the title. She ended up saying that she has proven that she will always show up and show out. Bianca ended up saying that with a win tomorrow, she will tie the record for the longest Royal Women's Championship reign. So that means that after Backlash, Bianca Belair will become the longest reigning Women's Champion of the modern era. So out came Damage Control. Out came Bailey, Dakota Kai, and EO Sky. Bailey got on the mic. She ends up telling Bianca that she made her on SmackDown. She ends up saying that she is not surprised that Bianca is bragging about how many days she has been champion. So Bailey ends up saying that EO is going to put an end to Bianca's history party that she is excited about. And Bailey ends up saying that when EO wins the title, Bianca will have to get out of their ring. So, Bailey I'm saying, you know, herself with Dakota Kai will become the new women's tag team champions. So, Damage Control end up coming into the ring. Bianca end up fighting uh, Damage Control off. So, she end up taking out uh, Bailey and Dakota Kai. And then Bianca got face-to-face with EO Sky. 
So damage control ended up pushing Bianca, and she fell onto EO Sky. Bianca then knocked Dakota down, and we had Bianca end up going for the KOD on Bailey, but EO Sky delivered a drop kick to uh, Bianca. And then we had a three on one beatdown, damage control uh, beatdown on Bianca. So then Liv Morgan's music ended up hitting. So Liv Morgan and Smiley Raquel, Raquel Rodriguez, ran down to the ring. And pretty much that was basically that. Just very meh segment it was. Obviously, Bianca Belair is retaining the title tomorrow night. I'll see them putting the title on EO Sky. And then SmackDown came back on commercial. We had the Usos and Sol Sokoa backstage. The Usos were hyped for their match tomorrow night. Jimmy ended up asking Sokoa if he is ready. Sokoa didn't even answer Jimmy. Jay ended up telling Sokoa that Jimmy asked him a question. So Sokoa ended up telling Jay that he heard the question. And that tomorrow he will do his part. But they better do theirs. So pretty much that was you know, basically that. Now we have the Street Profits. Versus Imperium, Giovanni Vinci and Ludwig Kaiser. And this was, you know, a meh match in my opinion. So Ludwig Kaiser and Montez Ford start off the match. Kaiser ended up taking in Vinci. Vinci ended up going after Dawkins. Kaiser delivered a kick to the side of uh, Montez Ford's head. Kaiser ended up throwing Ford to the outside. Vinci delivered a crossbody off the top rope onto both uh, Dawkins and Ford on the outside. Vinci ended up throwing Montez Ford back to the ring, and he ended up delivering a moonsault to Ford. So Vinci ended up going for the cover. Ford ended up kicking out. Kaiser then tagged in. Kaiser deliver, uh, delivered a right hand onto Montez Ford, to which he ended up following up with a kick. Kaiser then delivered a suplex to Ford. So Kaiser ended up going for the cover, and Ford ended up kicking out. Kaiser ended up going for a right hand, but Montez Ford delivered a back suplex to Kaiser. So we had Dawkins and Vinci end up tagging in. Dawkins then delivered a clothesline to Vinci. Dawkins ended up hitting Vinci with a spin and elbow. And then Dawkins hit Vinci with a kick to the side of his head. Ford then tagged in. And he went to the top, and he ended up hitting the, the frog splash to Vinci. So Ford ended up going for the cover, and there you go. The Street Profits ended up winning the match. Overall, meh match this was. And then we had Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes ended up coming out as SmackDown came back from the commercial. Cody came out to a... Loud pop from the crowd there in Puerto Rico. Cody was wearing a suit. He got into the ring. He got on the mic. And he asked the Puerto Rico crowd what they want to talk about. But he ended up saying it in Spanish. He ended up saying to kill the beast in Spanish. He then ended up talking in English. And Cody ended up saying that he can say a lot about Brock Lesnar. He ended up saying, when he thinks about Lesnar, a name comes to mind, the gatekeeper. And he said, you know, everything about, you know, Brock Lesnar. You know, how about he's the beast incarnate? He's the next big thing. You know, here comes the pain. So, Cody ended up saying that his old coach would tell him that when you would make it as a top star, you would reach the kingdom. Of course, He's talking about his old coach, Arn Anderson. So Cody, I'm saying that Brock Lesnar is the one that is standing in the way of the gates for the kingdom. He I'm saying that if you work for the company, you never have to compete against him. Cody, I'm saying that you could travel and make a good living. 
and never have to fight Brock Lesnar. So Cody ended up saying that Brock picked the fight with him. He ended up saying that Lesnar has yet to explain, but maybe tomorrow when he beats it out of him at Backlash, he will provide information. So Cody ended up saying that he had said that he was afraid of Brock Lesnar. But Cody ended up saying that the thing is, tomorrow he will have no time to be afraid of Lesnar because he will bring the pain. Cody ended up saying that tomorrow it's a fair fight and that he will leave this beautiful island of charm because this will be the place where he got back on the road to finish in the story and claiming his kingdom. So that was pretty much what Cody had to say. Overall, it was a pretty decent uh, promo from Cody. Obviously, we still have no explanation as to why Brock ended up attacking Cody. I mean, where's the explanation? Should we, we need to get some explanation as to why Brock ended up attacking Cody. I mean, we should have got it already. So then we saw Matt Riddle. Matt Riddle was backstage with Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Riddle ended up saying to Owens and Sami Zayn that they will beat the Usos tomorrow at Backlash. And when the Tribal Chief, Roman Reigns, come back, he won't have a bloodline to come back to. So that was what uh, Matt Riddle had to say. And then we have Shinsuke Nakamura versus Karrion Cross. Of course, Karrion Cross was accompanied by Scarlett. And this was a very uh, good, fun match. So the match got on the way. Cross delivered some right hands, but Nakamura delivered some right hands and some kicks to Cross. Nakamura then delivered a flying kick to Cross. Cross ended up falling to the outside. Nakamura ended up going to the outside. He ended up run towards Cross, but Cross ended up taking Nakamura down with a knee. So Cross then power bombed Nakamura into the ring post. You know, Nakamura went back first into the ring post. So then SmackDown came back from the commercial. Nakamura was in control of the match. Nakamura delivered a kick to Cross's head. So Nakamura then delivered some forearms and some kicks to Cross. Cross was in the corner, and Nakamura delivered another kick to Cross. Nakamura ended up going for the cover, and Cross ended up kicking out. Scarlett then got on the ring apron to distract Nakamura. So Cross uh, took advantage of the distraction, and he had thrown Nakamura across the ring. Cross ended up going for the cover. Nakamura then kicked out. Cross ended up going for the cross jacket on Nakamura, but Nakamura reversed the cross jacket into an arm bar. Cross then turned it around as he lifted Nakamura up, but Nakamura ended up getting Cross into a guillotine. You know, this was very physical uh, stuff going on in the match here between Cross and Nakamura. So Cross ended up getting out of the guillotine. Nakamura then delivered a kick to Cross, to which he followed up with a German suplex. So Nakamura ended up going for the Kinshasa, but Cross delivered a clothesline to Nakamura, turned Nakamura inside out. It was a very uh, crazy clothesline from Cross. Almost like a desperation attempt from Cross. So Cross ended up going for the cover. Nakamura ended up kicking out. And just Scarlet on the outside was just, you know, being all like surprised at the kickouts from Nakamura because, you know, Cross, you know, was doing his best to just keep down Nakamura and Nakamura kept on kicking out. So Cross then ended up hitting Nakamura with a knee. He ended up hitting Nakamura with a back suplex. Cross then went for the cover. Nakamura then kicked out. Cross then ended up running towards Nakamura. Nakamura then delivered a kick to the side of Cross's head. And that's when Nakamura had the momentum and he ended up laying out uh, Cross with the Kinshasa. 
Nakamura ended up going for the cover. And there you go. Shinsuke Nakamura ended up winning the match. Overall, very fun, good physical match this was. And the crowd was just singing along to Nakamura's uh, theme song, you know, which was awesome. And then we saw Adam Pierce. Adam Pierce was backstage with Cameron Grimes to the moon. So he was there. He welcomed Cameron Grimes to SmackDown. And in came Baron Corbin, the free agent Baron Corbin. God, why, why is Corbin a free agent? Why is WWE making Corbin a free agent? I could say the same for Omos. So I'm like, when Corbin came in, I'm like, oh, okay, I know where this is going now. So Corbin ended up telling Grimes that he must be proud to have been picked last in the draft. Grimes then ended up telling Corbin that at least he got picked. So that was a shot at Corbin because he's a free agent. Because the free agents, you know, with Corbin and Omos, Von Wagner, Dolph Ziggler. The reason why they're free agents is because WWE doesn't want, you know, any of them on one brand. So they could just go to either Raw or SmackDown. So Corbin ended up telling Adam Pearce to tell Grimes that he is like Brock Lesnar. Both brands wanted him, and they couldn't agree where he would go. So Grimes then ended up challenging Corbin to a match. So Adam Pearce made the match official. So next week it's going to be Cameron Grimes versus Baron Corbin. Great. Great. Like, I'm so excited for it. Said nobody ever. Great. Cameron Grimes, already on SmackDown, and his first match is with Baron Corbin. Awful. Awful, awful, awful. Main event. Mixed tag team match. Rey Mysterio, Angelina Vega versus Dominic Mysterio, and Rhea Ripley. And this was just a very meh match here. I mean, we're seeing Zelina Vega and Rhea Ripley go at it for the title tomorrow night. Why are we? Why do we see Zelina Vega and Rhea Ripley go at it tonight? So the match got on the way. Zelina Vega and Rhea Ripley started off the match. Rhea ended up lifting Zelina up. Zelina Vega ended up getting out. She ended up delivering a kick to Rhea's face. Zelina was on the second rope. She ended up laying a hurricanrana to Rhea Ripley. Ray ended up tagging in, as did uh, his son Dom. So Dom came into the ring, got loud boos from the crowd there in Puerto Rico. Ray ended up throwing Dom into the ropes and delivered a kick. Ray then d- delivered an arm drag to Dom, to which Zelina ended up tagging in. Zelina delivered a hurricanrana onto Dom, and... Uh, Dom was on the second rope. Zelina ended up going for the 619, but Rhea Ripley ended up hitting Zelina with a big boot. So then as SmackDown came back from the commercial, Zelina did a crucifix cover on Rhea Ripley, but Rhea Ripley ended up kicking out. Also, I forgot to mention Finn Balor uh, was on the outside. Uh, no Damian Priest. We did not have you know, Santos Escobar or... Cruz del Toro, and Joaquin Wilde out there. So Dom ended up tripping Ray off the ring apron as Lena was going for a tag. Rhea then ended up slamming Zena onto the mat. Rhea ended up going for a power bomb, but Zena ended up delivering some right hands to Rhea. Rhea ended up running towards Zena. Zena moved out of the way, and Rhea went shoulder first into the ring post. Ray then tagged in, as did Dom. So, father and son went at it. Ray then delivered some right hands to Dom. He then delivered a cross body to Dom off the second rope. Ray then delivered some right hands in the corner to Dom, but Dom ended up ducking, ended up getting Ray on his shoulders. Ray then delivered some right hands, and Dom ended up dropping Ray face first onto the turnbuckle. Dom 
end up delivering the Michinoku driver to Ray. And Dom ended up going for the cover. Zelina ended up breaking up the pin. Rhea then ended up throwing Zelina to the outside. Ray ended up getting Dom on the second rope. Zelina then speared Rhea on the outside. Ray ended up hitting Dom with the 619. Finn Balor was on the ring apron. Ray then delivered a right hand to Balor. Ray then climbed to the top rope. And Dom ended up delivering a right hand to Ray. Dom then delivered a vertical suplex. And he ended up going for the three amigos. And Ray then ended up rolling Dom up. And there you go. Rey Mysterio and Zelina Vega ended up winning the match. Post-match, Balor went right to attack Ray. So Balor and Dom ended up stomping on Ray. Ray then fought back. And all we saw was Damian Priest. Damian Priest ran into the ring. And we had Dom, Balor, and Damian Priest end up being down on Ray in the middle of the ring. And then we saw Bad Bunny. Bad Bunny ended up coming out, which got a huge ovation. Bad Bunny got the loudest uh, reaction from the crowd there tonight. It was an awesome uh, reaction. So Bad Bunny came out with Santos Escobar, uh, Cruz del Toro, and Joaquin Wild. So Bad Bunny had kendo stick in hand. So... We had Escobar, Del Toro, and Wild end up going after the Judgment Day. Damian Priest was standing in the ring as he was looking at Bad Bunny. Damian Priest ended up telling Bad Bunny to come into the ring. So Bad Bunny ended up doing that. Dom ended up getting into the ring. Bad Bunny ended up hitting Dom with the kendo stick as Damian Priest ended up leaving the ring. And... Pretty much that was how SmackDown went off the air. So I'm going to say this. I think Bad Bunny and Damian Priest, they should main event the show tomorrow. And, you know, just by uh, the reaction uh, the crowd gave Bad Bunny uh, there, you know, they should definitely main event the show tomorrow. So I think they're going to have a good match, even though I'm not a fan of Bad Bunny. But at least Bad Bunny and Damian Priest, this had the best build out of anything else on uh, Backlash's card. I mean, Backlash's card looks very meh, in my opinion. So looks like Bad Bunny might get you know a win tomorrow on Damian Priest, you know, because... He's the hometown hero. So, but overall, just a very mid SmackDown it was. But the crowd uh, was, you know, hot throughout the night. They actually end up, you know, making some noise, you know, for the two hours. But the crowd is going to be hot tomorrow night for Backlash, you know, in Puerto Rico. So. I think, you know, the crowd's going to bring a little bit more energy to uh, Backlash tomorrow night. So, but very mid-Smackdown it was. Moving on to AEW Rampage, which uh, on Rampage, uh, the show was on at 6.30 uh, today because of the... Uh, NHL playoffs. So we had El Hijo del Vikingo and the Lucha Brothers. We have Penta Escoro and Ray Phoenix. They end up taking on QT Marshall, Aaron Solo, and Powerhouse Hobbs. Jay Cargill was in action. She had taken on a local jobber uh, from Baltimore, Gia Scott. Mark Briscoe ended up taking on uh, Preston Vance. And the main event, it was a firm deletion match. It was Matt and Jeff Hardy, Isaiah Cassidy, and Hook versus Ethan Page, Lee Moriarty, Big Bill, and Stokely Hathaway. 
So that was our rampage for uh, today, which the show was just very meh, in my opinion. Rampage opened up with El Hijo del Vikingo and the Lucha Brothers. You know, Penta Scoro and Ray Phoenix versus QT Marshall, Powerhouse Hobbs, and Aaron Solo. So Vikingo and the Lucha Brothers were accompanied by Alex Abrahantes, QT Marshall, Powerhouse Hobbs, and Aaron Solo, accompanied by Harley Cameron. And this was a fun match here. QT Marshall and Vikingo started off the match. Marshall ended up mocking uh, Vikingo. Vikingo responded with a springboard dropkick to Marshall. And he ended up pinned a pair of insiguris to QT Marshall. So Vikingo ended up going up to the top. He delivered a very good Huracurana to QT Marshall. So Aaron Solo and Ray Phoenix end up taking in. So both Solo and Phoenix end up delivering some chops. Solo end up firing off a few forearms to Phoenix. Phoenix then delivered a springboard arm drag and a kick to uh, Solo's head. So we had uh, Phoenix looking to lock in a knee bar on uh, Aaron Solo, but Aaron Solo ended up escaping and tagged in Powerhouse Hobbs. Penta ended up tagging in, and he delivered a crossbody off the top to Hobbs. So, Penta ended up sent up for the fear factor, but Hobbs ended up escaping out of that. Penta ended up delivering a thrust kick, but uh, Hobbs ended up delivering a clothesline. So, Phoenix and Vikingo both of them were trying to level Hobbs, but Hobbs ended up taking both Phoenix and Vikingo down with a forearm and a power bomb. So Hobbs then delivered a delayed vertical suplex to Penta. QT Marshall ended up taking in. He delivered a right hand to Penta's midsection on the outside. So then as uh, Rampage came back from the commercial, Hobbs ended up taking in. He delivered a clothesline to Penta. Aaron Solo ended up tagging in, and Penta ended up catching Solo with a sling blade. Hobbs ended up trying to interfere, but Penta ended up delivering a kick to Hobbs' head. So, QT Marshall, Aaron Solo, and Hobbs end up on the outside. The Lucha Brothers and Vikingo end up leveling them all with top, suicide, top suicidas. So, that was pretty awesome. Vikingo ended up ascending to the top, and he ended up hitting a moonsault. Penta ended up uh, planting Phoenix on top of Aaron Solo. Phoenix, he was now the legal man in the match. He ended up on the apron with Aaron Solo. Solo ended up getting Phoenix back into the ring. Hobbs and QT Marshall were waiting for Phoenix to get back into the ring. And then uh, Hobbs then delivered a splash in the corner. QT Marshall delivered a uppercut to Phoenix. Aaron Solo then delivered uh, diving foot stomps, and he ended up going for the cover, and both Penta and Vikingo end up breaking up the pin. Aaron Solo was looking to go for a suplex, but Phoenix ended up fighting out of it. Vikingo made the blind tag. QT Marshall ended up catching Vikingo with a right hand, but Vikingo delivered a Canadian Destroyer on the apron, which was great. So he ended up getting QT Marshall onto a table that was set up on the outside. So Vikingo was looking to go off the top, but we had uh, Harley Cameron end up pulling QT Marshall off the table. Vikingo then delivered a German suplex to Aaron Solo. So we had the Lucha Brothers end up coming in. They delivered a diving double foot stomp package pile driver to QT Marshall. So we had El Hijo del Vikingo and the Lucha Brothers ended up win the match. Overall, this was a very fun, good opening match to Rampage. Vikingo is just awesome. And Vikingo and the Lucha Brothers, you know, they make a good uh, trios tag team. So, but very fun opening match. And as Rampage came back from the commercial, we saw Lexi there. Lexi there was backstage outside Chris Jericho's 
uh, dressing room. Lexi Nair ended up saying that Jericho has requested time to speak. So she knocked on Jericho's door. Jericho ended up asking, who is it? And Lexi Nair ended up saying that it's her. So Jericho ended up asking Lexi Nair if she's alone. She ended up saying yes. Jericho then opened the door. He ended up saying due to uh, Adam Cole's attack Wednesday night on Dynamite, he has taken extra steps to make sure they won't be in the same building. So pretty much that was what Jericho had to say. And then we had Jay Cargill versus Gia Scott. Squash match this was. Jay Cargill end up delivering Jada to Gia Scott. Jay Cargill end up winning. Post-match, Layla Gray and Mark Sterling end up joining Jay Cargill in the ring. That was that. Squash match. Moving on. Mark Briscoe versus Preston Vance. Preston Vance accompanied out there by Jose, the assistant. And this was a pretty good match here. So Mark Briscoe delivered a forearm, which sent Vance tumbling to the outside. Vance was pissed off. He was ripping up signs that uh, Mark Briscoe's kids bought because Mark Briscoe's family uh, was sitting at a ringside. So that angered uh, Mark Briscoe because Preston Vance ended up ripping up the signs. So we had Mark Briscoe end up leveling uh, Vance with a blockbuster off the apron. Briscoe then delivered a chop. He ended up grabbing a chair from under the ring. He sat uh, Preston Vance on the chair and he climbed up to the top and we had uh, Preston Vance end up ducking out of the way and Mark Briscoe was sent crashing into the chair. Preston Vance sent Mark crashing into the barricade. So then as Rampage came back from the commercial, Preston Vance was in control of the match, ended up blocking in a full Nelson on Mark. Mark ended up escaping and he delivered a German suplex, but Preston Vance uh, responded with a suplex of his own to uh, Briscoe. And Preston Vance followed it up with a rolling elbow to uh, Mark Briscoe. Briscoe came back and ended up hitting a drop kick to uh, Preston Vance. And so both guys went back and forth with some forearm shots. Preston Vance ended up gaining the upper hand. He delivered a knee to Mark Briscoe's midsection. So Mark Briscoe ended up delivering a lariat and a splash in the corner to uh, Preston Vance. So Briscoe then delivered a flatliner. He ended up going for the cover and Preston Vance ended up kicking out. Briscoe then set up for the J Driller, but Preston Vance ended up escaping and delivered a discus lariat to Briscoe. Briscoe then ended up rolling out of the ring and Preston Vance ended up falling out of the ring. So Preston Vance ended up tossing Mark Briscoe back inside and uh, Preston Vance ended up grabbing a chair from under the ring. The referee ended up catching Preston Vance with the chair. Preston Vance dropped the chair and he delivered a spear through the middle rope to Mark Briscoe, which was crazy. Jose, the assistant, ended up sliding the chair in the ring. The referee ended up catching Jose doing that which that allowed Preston Vance to low blow Mark Briscoe. So Preston Vance ended up going for the cover. Briscoe kicked out. Briscoe ended up sending Vance to the outside. He set up the chair in the ring and he ended up uh, flying and taking out uh, Preston Vance. So Mark Briscoe ended up taking a shot at Jose, the assistant. He got into the ring and he delivered a high running boot to Preston Vance. Briscoe then followed up with the J-Driller and he ended up going for the cover. And there you go. Mark Briscoe ended up winning the match. Overall, this was a good match uh, between uh, Briscoe and Preston Vance. Post-match, Mark Briscoe's uh, family ended up getting to the ring and they celebrated uh, with him. 
So that was uh, pretty awesome. Main event, the Firm's Alicia match, Matt and Jeff Hardy, Isaiah Cassidy and Hook versus The Firm. You know, Ethan Page and Lee Moriarty, Stokely Hathaway, and Big Bill. And this was a fun match, in my opinion. It was a lot of, you know, there was some comedic, comedic points in the match, you know, with Stokely Hathaway. But this match took place in the Hardy compound. So the firm ended up pulling up to the Hardy compound. They end up asking where the Hardys are. So Ethan Page ended up destroying uh, the Hardys' mailbox. And suddenly the gates open to the Hardy compound. Vanguard 1 ended up appearing with a message from Matt Hardy. And Matt Hardy was in his uh, deletion uh, gimmick. You know, delete, delete with the uh, long hair. So Matt Hardy ended up welcoming the firm to their deletion. And this took place in the day. And then suddenly, the firm ended up traveling through time. And now, it was at night in the Hardy compound. So now we saw um, Matt and Jeff, Hook and Isaiah Cassidy end up appearing. They began shooting fireworks at the firm. So the Hardys, Hook and Isaiah Cassidy end up being down on the firm. Big Bill end up leveling Isaiah Cassidy and Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy end up sending Big Bill crashing into a tree. Isaiah Cassidy end up jumping Big Bill after he tossed, you know, Jeff into a tree. Big Bill end up getting him off his back, end up getting Isaiah Cassidy off his back. Big Bill then sent uh, Cassidy crashing into a tree, and then Big Bill choke slammed Isaiah Cassidy. So Matt Hardy then delivered a snap suplex to Page. He ended up going for the cover, and Page ended up kicking out. Matt Hardy ended up setting up for the twist of fate to Ethan Page, but Page ended up uh, delivering some right hands to Matt Hardy. Jeff Hardy then ended up hitting Big Bill with a branch. He ended up using a different branch to lock in a cross face on Big Bill. Big Bill started fading, and then we saw Stokely Hathaway. So Stokely Hathaway was looking forward, and then we see Maxwell and Wolfie end up appearing. They were in a mini car, and they were looking to run over Stokely Hathaway, but Stokely Hathaway was able to roll out of the way. You know, comedic part here, you know, in the match. So Matt Hardy then delivered a side effect to Ethan Page. This was inside the ring set up, I think, like, you know, like a garage type uh, area in the Hardy compound. So we had Matt Hardy end up set up for the twist of fate. Ethan Page ended up escaping, and he delivered a big boot to Matt Hardy. Hook then tossed Lee Moriarty into the ring and delivered a clothesline. Matt ended up throwing Page into a set of stairs. Stokely Hathaway ended up getting in the ring as he tried jumping on Hook. Hook ended up seeing Stokely Hathaway coming, and he planted Stokely Hathaway as Page ended up setting up for the twist of fate on the outside. Matt Hardy ended up escaping out of that. He ended up sending Page crashing into the ring post. Matt Hardy then got into the ring with Ethan Page. And Ethan Page ended up getting Matt Hardy up on his shoulders. He ended up sending uh, Matt Hardy crashing through a table. So Page and Matt Hardy continued to brawl in the ring. Big Bill appeared and ended up hitting Matt Hardy with a chair. So then we saw Stokely Hathaway. Stokely Hathaway ended up taking a seat in the uh, theater portion in the Hardy house. So we had uh, Gothic Baby end up appearing. And Rebby Hardy, Matt Hardy's wife, end up showing up. Rebby Hardy was talking to Stokely Hathaway in Spanish, you know, saying, what are you doing in my house? So Senor Benjamin end up tasing Stokely Hathaway. So the rest of Matt Hardy's kids appeared. They end up beginning to beat down on Stokely Hathaway. You know, more comedic uh, parts in the match here. 
So we saw Paige end up pouring gas onto both Matt and Jeff Hardy. Isaiah Cassie appeared on the roof and delivered a swanton bomb to you know everyone there. Stokely Hathaway was thrown in the ring by Rebby. Rebby then delivered a twist of fate to uh, Stokely Hathaway. Maxell ended up ascending to the top. He delivered a swanton onto uh, Stokely Hathaway. Isaiah Cassie then ended up getting Big Bill on the table outside. Isaiah Cassie then delivered a leg drop off of a ladder that was set up next to the table. So Ethan Page started being down uh, Matt Hardy in the ring. Jeff Hardy, Isaiah Cassie, and Hook end up joining uh, Matt Hardy. Page ended up finding himself surrounded, and Matt ended up saying, this is all Page's fault. Hook then delivered a suplex to uh, Page. Isaiah Cassie ended up tossing him over to Matt. Matt ended up telling Ethan Page that they could have been great friends. And then Matt ended up landing the twist of fate on Ethan Page. Jeff Hardy ended up going up to the top. He delivered a swanton to Page. Matt then ended up going for the cover on Page. And there you go. The Hardys, Isaiah Cassidy, and Hook ended up winning the firm deletion match. Overall, this was a fun match. You know, it took place, you know, on the Hardy compound. You know, comedic moments, you know, from Stokely Hathaway, you know, at points in the match. So, but it was a fun match. So that was how Rampage ended. But anyways, that's it for the SmackDown and AW Rampage review. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this uh, review. Definitely give the video a thumbs up. Come subscribe. And be sure to check out my review of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 if you guys haven't checked it out. So until then, I'll see you all later.